Hello, welcome to the Run Testers, and this our review of the Garmin Epix. It's simplistic to say that the Epix is a Phoenix 7 with an AMOLED screen, but that really does sum up the watch quite well. It has a 47x47mm case, which is the same size as the standard Phoenix 6 or 7, and you get the same feature set by the AMOLED screen and the corresponding drop in battery life. The screen involved is a 1.3 inch AMOLED touchscreen display that has always on options for both activities and general life. It has a water resistance rating of 1080M, and when it comes to the materials involved you can choose between steel and titanium bezels and strengthened glass and sapphire crystal for the screen. The Epix is pricier than the Phoenix. It costs from £799.99 for the base steel model and from £899.99 for the titanium. The titanium is a little bit lighter, weighing in at 70 grams with the band, whereas the steel watch is 76 grams with the band. You're getting all the usual sensors you get on Garmin's high-end watches, You're getting, including a heart rate sensor, a pulse oximeter sensor, an altimeter, barometer and compass, and you can use both Bluetooth and ANT Plus to connect other sensors. A big new feature across the Epix and Phoenix 7 range are new GPS tracking modes. The most basic is GPS only, which gives you the longest battery life. You can use multi-GNSS systems at once, those being GPS, Colonas, and Galileo. And if you opt for the more expensive Sapphire version of the Epix, there is a multi-band all GNS systems on mode, which will use more battery life, but promises greater accuracy. When it comes to the battery life, Garmin lists the Epix at lasting six days in smartwatch mode with the always on screen on, or 16 days if you're using Raise to Wake. With GPS only activated, you'll get 30 hours of tracking or 42 hours if you don't have the always on screen activated. When it comes to the more battery intensive GPS modes, when charged or 100%, the Epix offers 15 hours of multi-GNSS multi-band tracking, 24 hours of just multi-GNSS, 30 hours of GPS, or 38 hours of ultra track mode. Big new features on the Epix include Garmin's Stamina feature, which is a new way to help you judge exertion and how much you have left in the tank during activities. You're getting an upgraded race predictor with trend graphs to show if your predicted times from 5k to the marathon are improving or getting worse. There are multi-continent topographical maps preloaded with the Sapphire editions of the watch. And when navigating, you can use the new upper head tool to mark checkpoints such as aid stations and marathons so you know how far they are away. There's a new hit workout sports mode and a torch mode, but this is not the built-in LED light that you get on the Phoenix 7X. Other key features on the Epix that have been retained from the previous Phoenix models are the colour maps with routing features like Climb Pro and turn-by-turn -turn navigation, music storage with offline playlist support for Spotify Premium users, detailed training analysis with insights into how you're acclimating to heat and altitude, Garmin's body battery measurement, access to the Connect IQ App Store and Garmin Pay, the Power Manager feature, which can help you adjust the settings on the watch to save battery life, and the Pace Pro feature for racing. All right, guys. Uh, the AMOLED Phoenix. It's, 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 you know, it's the golden goose, the unicorn <laughs> people have been waiting for. What's it like to live with an AMOLED screen Phoenix? I have to say, I didn't know I wanted an AMOLED screen. <laughs> I didn't really know I needed one until I saw it. Now I've seen it. And when I hold it up, we've been testing these watches sort of side by side with the Phoenix 7. And yeah, it's made me realise how, how kind of hard done by we've been <laughs> <laughs> with all of the old watch screens. It's, it's beautiful, right? The screen is it's the selling factor here. And yeah. it's, it's amazing. It absolutely lives up to what the best case scenario would be. Like I obviously rotate between the Phoenix and the Apple Watch, so my main watch is partly because the quality of life when using an Apple Watch is so nice because it's got a nice, such a nice screen. And I worried the screen wouldn't actually be that bright. I worried the battery would be terrible, but actually the screen is very bright. Mm. The battery's kind of okay. Yeah, I think, you know, when we saw the Garmin venue when Garmin introduced that watch, I kind of think everyone was thinking, well, when is this going to come to a top end forerunner? And when is this come, going to come to the Phoenix? They brought it essentially to a, to a Phoenix. I know it's the Epix, but it's a, it's a Phoenix with an AMOLED on it. And it's a really good screen. I was, you know, you always worry with AMOLEDs whether the visibility is going to be there outdoors when you're out. And it's kind of where the transvective display really kind of excels. But actually, for me, in general, it's been it's been great to use. It's high resolution than one you're getting on the um, Venue Two and Venue Two Plus. You're getting something actually better quality in terms of what Garmin's got in its other ranges. I think it's really responsive. You know, all the things that I was worried might not deliver, but actually. Mm. It's been strong in all those fronts. And actually, I think, you know, from getting through menus and stuff like that, it works really nicely. 
I think for maps, for me, you know, if you like maps, I think the experience, I mean, we'll probably dig into that more, but I think the map experience of viewing maps on the on that screen is great. So for me, it's all real kind of positives on that front. Maps really pop. Yeah. I love my stuff to pop. It really pops. Yeah. Uh, and like I say, the touchscreen, again, like, you know, Polo's put touchscreen mm. on their watches and you, know, you never use them. They're just yeah. very laggy, but this is a very nice touchscreen. I still, you're only really using it, I think, for widgets. Mm. It's great for getting rid of notifications, mm. swiping to get rid of notifications. Um, and in the run mode, it turns itself off automatically. You can turn it back on, but mm. I wouldn't use it so much there. But broadly, I think Gar- Garmin has delivered here. People yeah. wanted a Phoenix with a good AMOLED screen yeah. and it and it is a good AMOLED screen and it's when I'm on the run with the Phoenix and the Epix, I am only looking at the Epix. It's so much brighter in all conditions and more vivid when following routes. Mm. I love the screen. I'm not sure personally, I, I like big batteries and I'm not sure yeah. that I would trade that screen brightness for the overall charge it once a month kind of battery yeah. benefit that you get from yeah. the, the Phoenix. That's my only thing. But yeah. I, I oh, do yeah. think, you know, and the, and the touch screen, the hybrid controls it's nice to have the option, yeah. but there's some kind of bits that jar when you're kind of scrolling through. So you, you can, for a good example, on a workout, you can jump through to the a recent activity to the first screen, but then when you want to jump in and go into the detail of it, you have to go from touch and tap to yeah. the buttons. And so some of it isn't quite kind of linked up yet. I, I'm sure they'll probably get to that. But Yeah, they're it, getting used to it, I think. You're right. Because yeah, when you mentioned that, I thought, oh, yeah, it really triggered in my mind. Like, for example, on the Apple Watch, on your watch screen, I have weather. You click weather on the Apple Watch. On the main screen, you go straight to your weather app. On here, I've got weather on the main screen. Does nothing. You know, the touch does nothing. Yeah. But actually, if you scroll through to the widget, you can then touch and go into more detail. So I think it just takes a little bit of linking up. Yeah. And then wearability, I, the size of it feels... Better than the we tested the Phoenix Seven X, which is obviously yeah. a big beast of a watch, and I think the one point this is the guy one point three inch yeah. screen, right? Which yeah. is just yeah. and the overall casing is just about what I kind of like on my yeah. wrist in terms of size. Yeah, it's it's the same size as the Phoenix Six Pro yeah. I wore for a long time, yeah. and you've been using the Enduro for this will feel smaller, I guess, to you than the Enduro and the Seven X. So I think, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's and also you should say you know with this watch you're getting one one size option comparison yeah. to what you're getting with the Phoenix you're just getting one option but I think the option that they've chosen to get settled <laughs> with is the is the ultimate one and if you think of, and if you look back that first Epix that you know this is kind of the the rebirth of it it was a kind of blocky square watch they've gone to a round <laughs> it's a round watch now this is this is what I think the form factor that works for Garmin really nicely and I think if you've used a Phoenix this will feel very similar in terms of experience and look and design that you're getting it I also say the titanium I love the titanium on the uh, on the Enduro, I think you know that's something I would probably play personally a little bit extra if you know if you wanted. I think it does in terms of that weight difference. I think it's quite nice. So that would be another thing that I kind of you know know it's in my time with that as well. All right, uh, now let's dive into the the always thorny issue of accuracy. But you know we've done a lot of testing of this watch. I so, yeah, I've yeah. been using it mostly yeah in the multi band levels, the highest level of accuracy. To see how that does the battery. How what have you guys found of accuracy really? I've been doing the same. I've had it in that same kind of max um, GPS mode, and actually, I found the accuracy pretty good. Um, I've been pretty satisfied. I've been using it alongside uh, the Epic, so I've been using it alongside the Phoenix Six Pro as well. And kind of the runs that I've done, it's been very reliable. And all those kind of core running metrics that I expect to see felt pretty much spot on in terms of what I got in my runs. Really, so all very positive on that front. I think. Same for me. I had it up against the Phoenix Seven. X and up against the Enduro on many of my runs and they all came up within the kind of that sort of 10% or so kind of margin mm. you know that they always read a little bit over or a little bit under depending on which watch which day but it's within the kind of margin for error so mm. for what I use is like overall distance rather than sort of getting into sort of the granular looking at whether I'm running on the paths or whatever through yeah. the maps <laughs> But I know you go a little bit deeper, Nick. <laughs> Let's go for the obsession. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been looking. I've got the DC Rainmaker analyzer up for every single run with the watches, checking every single thing. Oh, they went wrong there. I had a, actually even got one of Kieran's runs. I'm that much. Of it. <laughs> so I noticed, yeah, for example, Kieran run in central London. It was interesting to see both watches performed really well on your Epix versus Semex, but both had some GPS things where you'd flick into the tens and stuff like that. And what I really need GPS accuracy is on pacing for like lap pace of reps and the Epix and the Phoenix, and actually the whole new next generation of watches that are coming out now that use multiple satellite systems at once are an upgrade on the previous generation for me. Like the Phoenix 6 Pro is notably less accurate uh, than the Epix and the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Vertix 2 and even the Apple Watch, which uses multiple mm. satellites. Interestingly, and I think this is probably going to be in a case-by-case, watch-by-watch basis almost, the Epix 
has been more accurate for me than the Phoenix. In fact, the Epic is the only watch to ever nail one GPS dead spot near me <laughs> on a thing I call the dog loop, which is where we run reps where a dog barks at us every lap. <laughs> That's quite scary. And there's a real, there's a, there's a dead spot on one side of it where it veers out and it gives you a load of extra distance. And I had to stop using it because it, I didn't trust the numbers I was getting there. The Epic's keeps me on the pavement and it's it's nice to look at a gps track and see the right side of the road see going through an alley it's staying right on the right boundary but it will still have problems because gps will always you're just more likely to get the best of gps but even at its best gps will have problems basically yeah, yeah. well the best of satellite systems in general i don't just mean the gps one obviously let's have a quick word on heart rate because i think we always i think well, our heart rate sections are often quite similar for watches but um <laughs> Uh, T- TLDR by a chest strap but okay how do you find <laughs> <laughs> how do you find that right yeah I mean it's it's a familiar story it's kind of okay when you're doing the kind of long consistent pace or consistent intensity sort of runs it kind of handles it fine up against the chest strap and I found the performance between the 7X and the Epics to be sort of fairly close mm. it's when you start to get into doing interval sessions mm. big changes of intensity running up hills all that kind of thing that it start you start to see on both of those watches, actually, Epics as well, mm. you start to see sort of some lagging and lurching. But, you know, that, that does have an effect. It's, it can skew some of those other readings that if you're going to rely on things like recovery time and yeah. all of the other stuff that goes into it. But, yeah, if you want to use all that, get a chest strap, basically. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, they've got, it's got all of Garmin's, you know, top training load stuff on yeah. here. You know, you, that is, it's going to be useful stuff to you down the line. Yeah. Going to get chest. Like, I found the Epics a little bit more reliable than the bigger Seven X. I think basically yeah. this: the smaller Garmin you get, the smaller, lighter Garmin you get, the better the heart rate. <laughs> so, like the four and a forty-five probably has the best kind of thing. But yeah. truth be told, even with the best watches on heart rate, things like the Apple Watch, uh, I still use a chest strap because I use heart rate for training. And if you're using heart rate for training, I think you can't rely on a watch. Yeah, if you want a little bit of that guidance, then it's there and it's reliable for most runs. But ultimately, if you if it's a metric that you are really focused on driving what you're doing in your training, then ultimately get that heart rate track. All right. Uh, a new feature across Garmin's kind of new watches, the Phoenix as well, is called Stamina, which is a new way to kind of gauge effort. Um, it's based on kind of your last four weeks of training data. It can vary from person to person based on the kind of training you've done. But... Basically, on a run, it'll give you like an estimate of how much juice you have left in terms of distance to run, or how much of a percentage stamina you have, and it's it's all quite interesting. It's on the uh, it's on the Epics on the Phoenix. We're going to mm-hmm. test this a lot with kind of racing down the line. We've done I've done a race in it already, and it's I don't know. It's all, it's it's hard to get your head around this. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I so stamina. The definition actually is about kind of physical and mental kind of endurance, <laughs> yeah. about phys- ability to sustain physical and mental. And I think. What it can't do is really gauge that that mental side of things. See, what I believe it's trying to do is essentially to stop you going out yeah. too hard yeah. at certain times during a race or a, a section of training. Yeah, I did a cross-country <laughs> race with this, and I thought it was going to be really interesting because cross-country, obviously, it could be very useful because there are parts of a cross-country race where you're getting a bit of energy back. You're going downhill, uphill. and So the first K, I did like a big uphill. A cross-country race, you really have to get in position early. You obviously don't want to be stuck in a pack in the mud, slipping around. So I sprinted out, went up a hill quite fast, and I'd lost 30% of my stamina. <laughs> like um, in the first kilometre, I was going, oh, okay, well, I've got you know I've got nine to go here. Mm. But then after that, it kind of levelled out, and but I was still you know running hard i was running at a sustainable pace but you know i was i should have been dropping and i basically found it quite hard to at the end of the race i was like oh, i don't think that really really helped me because yeah. anything i would have backed off based on losing that much in the first bit but then it turns out the pace i was running i was gaining i think it just needs a load more testing yeah yeah and i think like in, in my test i i did the i kind of did a kind of race kind of scenario kind of test on my own kind of with the uh the epics and the seven x and kind of you get that kind of red bar I kind of went out quick you can see that red bar already starting to kind yeah. of drop and it's like oh am I going out and then literally as soon as I kind of slow my base down the, the bar is green and it's kind of saying that you'll you'll kind of keep maintaining your stamina which I think there's a lot of there's a, ultimately there's a lot of factors driving what how this metric should be could or should be useful and a lot of things it needs to factor in is it factoring in all those things that might make it useful that's I think that's the key thing um, for me really here and are those things accurate so that's the yeah. other thing like if you think about some of the other we look at kind of race predictor and some of the other features and we look at it we go, well, that's not quite accurate mm. as to how I feel I could run mm. a 10k or yeah. if stamina is using some of that same data and it's not accurate and then it's telling you 10 minutes into a run that you're in the bin mm. you know are you going to actually rely on that I, I think it's fair to say this is the kind of thing that could be better over time we don't want to rule it out as a feature yeah. it might not be very useful but it's just such a hard thing to do and Garmin has really shot for the moon here fair play to them they've gone for it when you know, there's loads of other metrics you could use, but I just don't know if it's 
it's something that I would use yet at all. And I think for me, you've got um, Pace Pro pacing yeah. strategies on here, which I have used on yeah. other gun watch, and I found really useful in a race kind of scenario. So they have got a feature there that I think works really strongly. So if it, maybe it might be able to work as well as that, I don't know. But I think they've got a strong kind of strategy feature in there for racing already, yeah. I think, as well. All right, uh, we're getting a, basically a slight upgrade in race predictor and the kind of new Garmin's, where you basically get a little graph trending over time, which uh, I think is genuinely very useful to have that trend but the actual race prediction is still a bit weird for me <laughs> yeah same mine mine feel a little bit negative i think <laughs> compared to what i think i'm able to run but i do think the graphs now add some really useful context so you get to see the trend of where your training is taking you overall i think that's actually more useful than the than the numbers themselves so you can see if your training is affecting your sort of you're progressing in the right direction yeah it's very hard for these i mean i think they could be better i think choruses race predictions are better like i've run faster 10ks and this says i can as part of just longer workouts where a 10k was just part of it like around a 35 minute 10k and finished it and goes yeah you can run a 39 minute 10k like, well cheers you've just measured a 35 minute one so <laughs> I, I hope i can run a 39 minute 10k but um yeah and it's still a bit negative it has been quite for a garment for a while i've i think been pessimistic on ratings for me um which i don't think is the end of the world and i do think like you say the graph is now really important to show your training is going in the right direction it's just another reinforcer to things like the productive training status now uh the epics is like i say it's a phoenix with an amoled screen and um so you're getting garmin's lovely lovely maps which are even lovelier dare i say it on a big amoled screen um it's it's so bright yeah i mean it just makes yeah the colors pop it's like it just it's much easier to see on the move you know all yeah. of those things it's just it's a it's a much better nicer experience for for navigation on you know navigating on a watch can be quite hard with the maps generally but this this gives it something extra i think in terms of like picking out that terrain and the detail mm. and that which i think is the thing i most know it's like i think like all of us we were running with the phoenix and the epics and you put those side to side in terms of what you're seeing and the vibrancy of the, of the mapping in the two um watches you know it's, it's huge it's huge for me and i you know think I kind of mentioned, uh, well, we were kind of talking that I think like you know things like the, the Cinto and the Apple Watch where they have mapping feature and functionality on a kind of screen, which is great. And the fact that Garmin has this as well, and I think they've kind of done a really good job of it. And they've put a really good screen on here to make the most of that mapping experience. I think is is a thing that's kind of stood out for me in terms of having that AMOLED yeah. uh, on here on the Epics. I think it's probably the best thing about the screen. I think it's been the mapping for me. I think yeah. mapping on the move and is basically the key is contrast, and you get so much more contrast. You get a really nice dark green for yeah. the forest next to you, and the path really stands out. Yeah. And even up in the Scottish Pentlands, there was nothing around me. The path was very clear, and I was wearing the Phoenix at the same time. And under tree cover, the Phoenix screen just reflects so many branches. Mm -hmm. I find it a little hard to read. But yeah, I think this is one of the, the only real risk is you just get lost in the screen and miss your yeah. <laughs> But yeah. And that's, a, and that's the key thing is, you know, the mapping is what you're getting on here is, you know, is what you're getting on the on the Phoenix essentially. So if you wanted it with a colour screen, then that's what you, you're yeah. going to get here. So hmm. You're also getting obviously those touchscreen controls, which hmm. I know you prefer to use the buttons, Nick, but you can obviously sort of move the maps around yeah. with the touchscreen. You, you can't pinch and zoom, which I think, you know, would be a nice thing to add. But it does give you that kind of extra extra bit of ease of navigation on here. And, and you also get all of Garmin's brilliant map. You get Climb Pro, which is, I think is one of the smartest things on any watch uh, when it comes to routing in terms of telling you what each climb is like on your route. And you get the ability to create routes on the go. Like, go out and get lost and you can go get me home. But it's not just as simple as a straight line pointer. It will create a route for you to go home. Or you can follow the one you've come. It's, it's just really smart all on the watch. And Garmin leads the way on that thing. And then uh, the other feature actually they've added is Upper Head. Oh, yeah, exactly. So... Yeah. Up ahead, we, I've not been able to test this one, but you're basically able to plug in routes and then with waypoints marked on those routes. For example, I'm hoping this will work with a race. So mm -hmm. you, you could take a race that happens every year with the same route and the aid station's in the same place, plug that in if someone's run it before, mm -hmm. and then just know exactly how long you've got until you get to the next aid station or you've got how long it is until that next big climb and yeah. see all of these things coming out and then using you know expected time it will take to, to cover those sections and all this kind of detail coming in and that will be an excellent kind of additional kind of navigation feature for race mode i think sorry my cat is all over there. um <laughs> battery life is obviously one big question you've got an amoled screen um so would you be able to wear it for an ultra uh yes okay yeah. there you go you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you you, you can I, I think with for me the battery you know that sort of single stint thing is great it'll cover a long it'll cover you for a long long ultra of sort of 12 hours whatever but then for me the, the thing about comparing battery life to the other watches sort of phoenix sevens and enduro vertex two is that month kind of long can i charge this once yeah 
train pretty much every day, do a long run on a Sunday, and how often do I have to charge it? For me personally, the fact that I found this needed, it lasts me about eight days with kind of about 10 hours of GPS training. Yeah. You know, I, I personally would, now I've gone to the Enduro and had that kind of once a month, I'm kind of sold on that. <laughs> so I'm not sure I would trade that bright colored screen for that battery life insurance you got on the other watches but yeah that's very much the trade-off there isn't it mike are you where would you land on yeah that? so <laughs> i mean i think like my biggest fear obviously you're putting an amoled screen on here and what we've seen in the venue that ultimately that's you know if it's in an always on display always on mode as well that you in the venue you're getting a kind of few days and i was fearing that that's what we would get here the epics but for me that's not what the experience i got actually I think you are, it is capable of going 16, 70 days potentially with some tracking. I think you can get that. You have to kind of be more aggressive in terms of the kind of power management, you know, mm. you know streaming music, things like, you know, the pole socks. I think those are the extras, I think, are going to hammer it. I saw basically a kind of 5 to 10% drop off when I was doing a bit of tracking. So it's probably shorter than what Garmin would, would probably state for this watch. But ultimately, I think you can get a couple of weeks mm. out of it. I think for my running, um, the percentage wasn't massively off for a kind of an hour, an hour and a half of, of running. So I think the, the GPS performance and the, the battery life that you're getting here is pretty good. And I, it's not what I always expected. I was expecting to be charging this every few days with that with that color screen. And that is just not the case here, which yeah. I have to say, you know, hats off to Garmin. They managed to deliver it with that amount of battery life they have got yeah. there. So I see with a watch like this, like I never, I never want to look at like what's the battery life of gesture to wake. I'm, not, yeah. I'm using this as hard as I can. I've got it always yeah. on. I've got the multi-band GPS on. I'm streaming music sometimes, and it's still and all the notifications, and it's still going to last five six days. Mm. That to me is more than enough to, for, to pay for the screen in terms of that. You know, if I'm paying the piper in terms yeah. of battery life. Mm. So I used it for a three hour run. You with maps on the whole time, and it was sub zero conditions up in Scotland, and it dropped eleven percent. You know, I've done it for forty five minutes of music, and it's you know a running with music, and it's about five percent. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're going to get for a marathon with the always on screen on, with the the highest multi band on, mm -hmm. with music playing, and you're going to get for an ultra if you don't have music playing. Mm -hmm. So I'm prepared to charge a bit more. Like I'm often use the Apple Watch, which is charging every day, mm -hmm. and I thought it's like my, I thought this might be a one two day battery life, and that's mm -hmm. going to be a, probably something that's going to kill kill it. But mm -hmm. actually you can you can and the fact that you've got so many power manager modes means you, you know it automatically switches one on at night but you yeah. can refine that even more you, yeah. i don't even want heart rate tracking at night maybe yeah. i don't care about the sleep tracking maybe you can you can push it further but i think the most important thing is that when you're using it all guns blazing mm -hmm. everything on it's still getting you through kind of five days so in in normal mode for me when i did my run tests i got four percent from an hour's run yeah on the epics so i got eight percent when i went for the full all out kind of multi-band multi doodah yeah gps that was about double most of the time. On average, it kind of doubled what I was getting from the same settings on the Phoenix 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you burn sort of twice as quick, basically. But that still equates to like 25 hours of mm -hmm. runtime in a single stint yeah. on this watch, which yeah. is, you know, that's, that's good. And I guess for most people, that's that's going to cover what you need basically so yeah yeah i mean it, it is it is if you if you love that screen then you know this is going to be it's going to do a job for you still yeah i just i just only like to charge mine once a month okay, <laughs> okay verdict on the epics um i guess you know we can talk about other watches here and what it compares to but basically i really wanted a phoenix with an amoled a screen uh, as someone who used the apple watch and a phoenix a lot and this kind of actually delivers a little bit of best of both and it does deliver on what it's set out to in my opinion i would agree i think this is the other you know the new the new garments that we've been tested this is the one that's that's kind of stood out for me I, I the key thing for me was the battery life if they could put an amoled on there and get me and not make me charge it every couple of days which i know you'll have or like a day or whatever you have to do for the apple watch <laughs> then it would work for me but also in terms of all the features that you're actually getting you know yeah you'll get I think performance wise in terms of sports tracking so all the features that you would expect to get from a top end Garmin are here the mapping is great the screen works the, the actual just interacting the screen works really well as well and you're getting I think good enough battery life I think for me anyway in yeah. terms of the amount of running I'm doing on a weekly basis and the term, how I would want to use you know I love I've loved the Enduro and the, the huge amount of battery life and I still think that's a massive pull on that watch and some other watches you are going to get more battery life on other watches but i think the balance i think is right it is expensive it is an expensive, expensive. watch and i know uh, you know that you know that is that's that's a huge thing and you have to kind of pay attention to that but if you if you did want that phoenix with a color screen that's what you've been waiting for 
this is it and it's delivering on most fronts I think for me anyway yeah yeah I mean I, I, I kind of agree the screen is a cracker you know it's, mm. uh, it's got a real appeal I think if you want to save yourself a couple hundred quid just don't look at this screen ever <laughs> yeah. on anything yeah. and then you won't know you won't know what you're missing you'll be perfectly happy you know which yeah. is where I was until I put this on and it's exactly the same way I felt about the battery life and the Enduro until, yeah, yeah. until I got that month long battery life I didn't know it's like turning yeah. left on a plane right <laughs> it's, it's that kind of feel once you've seen it you want it but you're going to have to have deep pockets I, mm. I personally because of the way that I run and what I do I kind of prefer to have the longer battery life over the screen mm. um, I, I that's just that's just my preference mm. but i think it's a really really solid watch across kind of all of the main aspects yeah. that you kind of really want but you are going to pay for it paying for the note and i i really like the fact that you're not losing any of the phoenix i was worried to go oh you've got this screen but we've had to take away this yeah. Yeah, they haven't done that they've just no. and i think what's interesting about this is when you're looking at this new range from garmin i think the phoenix 7 is a pretty big upgrade in the phoenix 6 can you guys think it's not that you know not necessarily a huge upgrade but i think this is a very clear new yeah. watch a new watch that is offering you a very definitive improvement and then chucking in all the other little improvements yeah i think it's a really exciting new watch from garmin and i just you know the, if you're shopping in this bracket you kind of know the price you're paying yeah. you, you, it's, it's incredibly expensive mm. and it's like whether you can if you can afford it then you, you are going to get what you hope to get from it i think so i guess it's you just two questions here like has Garmin delivered what they set out to and I think it's yes and then it's is it worth it and that's really a case by case basis I guess and if you're talking about other watches outside of this outside of the Garmin sort of stable mm. I mean there is no other watch Apple watch aside really mm. and then some kind of quite niche kind of smart watches yeah. that, that have this kind of screen performance and all the running stuff together this is all almost in a on its own, really. Yeah, you kind of yeah. look at we, you kind of looked at the kind of most recent Polar stuff, where they're kind of in, kind of incorporating the kind of touchscreen stuff and those things, but it just didn't quite. It wasn't just executed in the way that I thought it would be. Garmin have kind of shown how how to introduce that color screen, how to make a touchscreen work on a high end mm. watch. I think I think the interesting thing with me is when you know or if we get a four and a nine four five kind of successor that has that um, yeah. display in, and I think that's I think that's going to be massive as well because i think you know getting that and a lighter for for a runner particularly if you're getting that and you're still getting that battery life and all those kind of features are going to get here hopefully that's something we'll see um and i think that's gonna yeah kind of throw a spanner in the works in terms of this but this is getting this to getting to this point with this watch i think is, is a huge thing for garmin and it you know for me it really kind of delivers yeah and normally i'd say with something like this is introduced i'd go oh, maybe skip the first gen they'll probably really ramp up the battery yeah. second gen and that might still be the case but actually the battery is good on this yeah um you know it's you know, it's a lovely bit of kit, and like you are, as someone who uses the Apple Watch, the quality of life every day when you're looking at a watch, it's just nice to have a nicer screen, I think. Um, and the Apple Watch has got very, you know, iffy native track. You can kind of get near a Garmin level by using other apps, but now yeah. it's just in this handy package. If you've got the money, it's it's out there now. It now exists basically. That's it, guys. That is our review of the Garmin Epics. We're going to do loads more testing, some race testing. We'll keep we'll keep you up to date on things like stamina. But overall, that's what we've got so far. This cat has been really annoying the whole review. She's been <laughs> just out of shot, so I thought I'd bring her in to face the music from these guys. What do you want to say to Taz? Yeah, just just leave me alone, Taz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, please go check. We've got loads of new videos up on these new Garmin's. We've got a Phoenix review. We've got some verses. There's, there's loads of watch content go <laughs> enjoy it down. yeah please like subscribe ring the little bell and you'll get notified when we put even more watch content up and other than that I guess we'll see you next time